next guest is a veteran actor whose television credits include everything from Studio One to Flamingo Road. Currently, he'll be the love interest for B. Arthur on the new ABC sitcom Amanda's. Here is Kevin McCarthy. Hi, Kevin. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> Here I come. Okay. <laughs> Loaded for bear. Well, you wouldn't call B. Bear, but anyway. <laughs> Now, you've done a lot of television and the films, and uh, is this the first time you've been involved in a weekly sitcom? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've played, uh, on one occasion only, I played Lee Grant's leading man for the first of an ill-ventured uh, series of her sitcom series called Faye. I was her boyfriend on that first series. Uh-huh. That was... Uh uh, that came and went rather quick. I'm trying to Quickly, remember what yeah, it was That's on. why I called it ill-fated. Yeah. You play <laughs> Zachary Cartwright on this one. Uh, Zach Cartwright, yeah. And they brought you in to beef up the ratings, they say. Well, I don't know. The, I think that the person that's going to beef up the ratings, um, certainly B, is a natural to do anything. She's got such a tremendous following, and she's so great. But I think Alan Mannings, the producer, has got a lot to do with what's happened. They brought in a new producer, and it's... I gather there's been a transformation, not to be believed, but we, we're believing it we're, because we're so, it's really so much fun. I'm having such a terrific time. I've got a marvelous part. It's a dynamic character. And uh, I had an interview with, with um, the director, Howard Storm, and Alan Mannings, and B, and uh, <coughs> casting director, that his name doesn't come to me at the moment, but at any rate, um, I said, look, I'm ready to do all kinds of things. I've got all this stuff that for years I've been doing in the New York theater. I started out playing humorous plays, comedies and things like that. I played drama, made um, uh, Death of a Salesman on stage with Paul Muni and in the films with Frederick March. I've done Shakespeare and Chekhov and Shaw and, and, uh, and all of it. And in California, there's so little opportunity. By California, I meant film land to do uh, all these. Strasberg once said to me, he said, You've got so much stuff that nobody knows you can do. And I said to Alan, I've got it. Let me do it. And I intend to do a lot of it. So they're giving it, you a free hand it, on there. Well, and they're awfully gracious and friendly and amiable and so forth to me. So I guess they like what I'm doing there. And I don't see it as a free hand, but as a chance to make a broader and deeper character than, let's say, the kind of wimpy fellow that I played is called Claude Weldon in Flamingo Road. I don't dislike that, that role, but um, it was really rather insubstantial and somewhat thin. Now, what does Zach Cartwright do? Well, he's been around the world for years, maybe 30 years, in construction, deserts, jungles, and he said I had to make a lot of decisions, and I made them, and they were damn good ones. <laughs> You know, he's one of those guys that really lays it on the line. He said, now listen, I'm going to take over here and try to help you out. You need, no, no, you need, you need a lot of help. And he's, he makes a tremendous move on a strong woman who is in need of some, something. And eventually, she and I, I fall for her. And I say at the end of the first show, I'm saying, God, I just walked out to sort of a night moment in, in the kitchen or we're ma I make her a little cocoa, and I inadvertently make it with chili powder. She says, you're ex not exactly a gazelle in the kitchen. Move over and let me make the cocoa. And as I leave the kitchen after she makes the cocoa, and I say, no, 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 thanks. <laughs> Take off. Say, I've got to go and get some sleep now. I think you better do the same. Uh, sweet dreams. And I walk through the darkened dining room, and I stop and say, gee, that's one hell of a woman. And she's saying in the other room, in the kitchen, in the darkened kitchen, I'm going to kill that man. <laughs> That's the end of our, <laughs> of our first show. And it's very, very charming and provocative. And then there are these terrific people on the show that are so funny and so, so talented. We have a clip from the show that we're going to take a look at. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have spoken. <laughs> oh, no, we want to take a, take a look at it. Here's Kevin McCarthy and B. Arthur in Amanda's. Kind of, as uh, some critics have said, it's sort of just another mod. Do you feel that way? Well, I, I really don't How know. How do you answer um, them, I should say? Uh, beg your pardon? How do you answer them? How do I answer that? that? I don't answer it because I don't really know what to say. I don't know how much you can't...
deprive B. Arthur, whatever it is she gave to Maud, even though she's playing another character, she's certainly bringing a lot of herself to it. And she must have given a lot of herself to Maud. It's the thing, they don't want you to suddenly appear in a beard or a, you know, a snood or something and be unrecognizable. A lot of her great natural characteristics, Sher uh, Spencer Tracy was always Spencer Tracy, mm -hmm. Hepburn's always Hepburn, and B. Arthur is probably always going to be Arthur, whether she's always going to be B. B. Arthur, whether she's playing, <laughs> whether she's playing uh, Maud or Amanda. She's dynamite. And I think we've got a dynamite show. I, I'm happy to be here to talk about it. Didn't you make your home on the East Coast for a long time? Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm a New Yorker. And love New York and still miss it and still sign my, I signed my California street address and then underneath it inadvertently write New York, New York, 10021. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I really still do. So how long have you been back out here now? Well, um, my wife, I'm, I've been married. Today's my wedding anniversary. Well, that's right. Congratulations. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank that's you. what they told us downstairs. Yeah, and we're about to, I'm rushing from here to go to that the lady and we're going out to a lovely dinner. That's what they wanted me to ask you, why you'd come and do a TV show on your anniversary, why you weren't out to dinner. But I'm going to a 9 o'clock dinner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Kate is a, she's an attorney and is a, actually a member of the New York Bar and the California Bar. And, but each time, we're, we've only been married four years, and each time we, uh, we um, have a bar exam, we also seem to have a baby. So she hasn't been practicing yet. <laughs> she's sworn in both places, and we hope that she'll be able to practice very shortly. So you guys must be bi-coastal in a lot of ways. Right. Mm. Do you do any work back in New York when you get there? Well, I haven't been playing on the New York stage since we met. We met in a, a very romantic way, and maybe we can talk about that another time because it's a long and lovely story. But um, I go around the country all the time. I'm doing Harry Truman. I do give him Hell Harry. And uh, I was in Tifton, Georgia, the night that I received the uh, notice that they wanted me to play this part that you've just seen. And uh, I was in Gainesville the day before, and I've been in... San Marcos, Texas, and Key West, and Spokane, and Buffalo. I, I've been all over the country, in every state, I think, playing Give Him Hell Harry. And so I have that sort of in my kick, as you might say, as something to do if things get quiet, or even if they don't. I love doing it. I'm such an admirer. I'm just intense admiration for the character of Harry Truman. And I... Uh, well, any time you need somebody to talk for two hours and 15 minutes, just call on me. Is that a, is that a one-man play? Can yeah. you do that? Yeah. One it's going to be the most frightening th thing to do. Every time you, you run into somebody, it does a one one person. It's thing. rather, and people can't understand how you can learn it. How do you, aren't you intimidated by all those lines and things like that? But and it, is, it takes an enormous amount of energy and vitality, of course. Speech has to be strong and clear in case you're in a place that... Uh, you know, so many places, you'll have a brand new small place, it'll be four or five hundred seats, and they want to amplify your voice. I've got a theatrical voice, you can hear me, you know, down the South 40, but uh, they want to use the amplification equipment. But if you don't have that kind of a amplification equipment, you want to be what uh, an ordinary or a standard New York or British stage actor would be, a man whose voice will fill a house. So using a lot of voice, a lot of energy, and a lot of, a lot of your dynamic for two hours or something like that. Well, we don't see you on uh, Amanda's. When you're not on that, we, we can see you on stage somewhere. Or well, you we can, can see, see me you in, in a new movie. Coming. new movie. I'm in, a, I'm in a little comedy called My Tutor, which is uh, floating around right now and evidently doing very well. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in a, a big movie called Twilight Zone, the movie, which, uh, of course, is uh, Steven Spielberg's film. And I'm in, there are four segments. I'm in a segment that's uh, directed by Joe Dante. Four, four segments, four directors. George Miller, Landis, Spielberg, and Dante. And of course, we can always see you in the original Invasion, invasion of Body, body snatchers, snatchers and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> this Twilight Zone thing, I did, it's just, it was so wild. I had a Why great time. Oh, I probably have given one of the broadest performances that's going to be seen in a long time. I did takes within takes. Really? I don't mean what, too many uh, takes for the director. Oh, okay. He says, hey, he's got about too many. What kind of, could you give us a little bit of the plot? Because it's a movie that's got several different stories in one. Well, they're all old Twilight Zone stories. There's some favorite stories that they, they picked out and decided they would revise them in some way, amplify them or bring them up to date or change them or put them back in time. This is the one about a kid who has this enormous powers that he's a little genius and he creates a family to suit himself. 
so his parents, his real parents are gone. He substituted a couple of kind of uh, daffy people that'll do anything that they want, he'll, that he wants for them. And I'm some sort of an uncle. I'm Uncle Walt which is based on the name of the character that I played in a famous Twilight Zone called The Last of Walter Jameson. Walter Jameson lived for 2,000 and some years, and I'm still here, and I'm playing my part, and it's rather flamboyant. I'm some sort of an old wino, evidently, or an old drunk, that he brings home to play the part of an uncle. And if he wants food, the food is always, you know, ice cream, hamburgers mysteriously appear, all kinds of wild effects. This kid can have, and every television, every time you turn your head in this house, you'll see a television set running cartoons wherever you look there, cartoons rolling. All the famous cartoons are rolling. And all the food is, you know, junk food, and the kind of food that pleases kids, candies, and so forth. When are they releasing Twilight Zone? June 24th, I believe. Also, it'll be out this summer, then. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Kevin, and good luck in Amanda's. Yeah, I've got another two hours, if you want. Well, don't, well I thought you were going to go to dinner. Do you want to stay? You'll come back. I'll tell you what, you come back and see us in two weeks and we have our new set. All right. I promise. And we'll put you on like as our one of our first guests on the new set. Thank you so okay? much. Okay? We're going to take a break and be right back with Bob Balaban, who has a new short feature out called SPFX 1140. Stay with us.